Hey guys, this week on Hook, the Kayak Angler's Resource, we have pro staffer Garrett Reed out of Joplin, Missouri, and Tackle Tips with Robbie. Let's get ready for the show. Hey guys, welcome to Hook, the Kayak Angler's Resource. Appreciate you showing up. Today we've got Garrett Reed, one of our pro staffers, along with Robbie's Tackle Tip. But uh, first, thought we'd just shoot the breeze a little bit about, uh, you know, you're getting into the sport or or you've been a kayaker, but you decide you're going to do some fishing. Um, what do you need to have in your boat? Yeah, that's a great question. We had a, uh, a guy, Kevin, uh, he picked up a autopilot, or excuse me, a Old Town uh, PDL 120 Sportsman. Um, and that was his first question. And that's always a tough question for us to answer because everyone's different. You know, Robbie told him, hey, you know, mine is a net. You know, I always want a net. We talked about that, you know, always having a net, especially when you're fishing, tournament fishing and whatnot. But not every guy's like that, you know. For him, it was like, um, you know, he, he wanted a cart. He wanted to be able to get to the water easily. Um, it was, you know, I, I think that the, the two for sure things, no matter what that you need, is going to be a, a paddle. And, and a PFD, I think. Paddle you know, and PFD, yep. Whether you've got a pedal drive, whether you've got a motor, uh, whatever, you want to be safe on the water, that, that PFD comes into play. And then, uh, you know, any good paddle, I, I think it goes a long ways. You don't realize it until you have to paddle quite a ways, and uh, at that point, it's too late. Yeah, and a lot of times you get guys come in here, and they're like, well, I'm getting a, you know, a 106 by Minn Kota or a, or a, or a you know, Hobies, of course, come with them, but... Um, or a, or a Jackson, you know, FD with the pedals, you know, I don't really need a paddle. I'm like, well, yeah, you need a paddle. Yeah. You know, you know, and, you know, we talk about it a lot in here. Um, you know, the difference in just, you know, we're kind of talking about a couple different things here, but just so paddles, you know, I personally like the uh, Yacht Gear uh, Backwater Assassin. Um, it has some teeth to it, and then it has, uh, you know, it has your line grabber as well. Um, I like it because it's great for rivers, great for pushing off, um, especially when you're, you know, rolling towards a stump or something like that. Now, not everybody needs that. There's, you know, a lot of people, if you're going to get an old town kayak, get an old town paddle um, to match your boat. Um, I do agree on my 106 uh, Minn Kota. Mine stays on the side of the boat most of the time. But if I, you know, I only got that other paddle just to go to the river. But yeah, man, it, it, it's so subjective because it just depends on what you do. Um, you know, PFD, kind of the same thing. You know, I get people in all the time. We kind of talk about it. Um, the only PFD that I think is a must is a PFD in general. You, you know, you have to have one on. Um, I always tell people if you need, if you're in a situation where you really need your PFD and you don't have it, it's too too late. You're, you know, you're, you're cooked. So, um, but you know, I like the Chinook. Uh, I know you wear the inflatable. I do. I really like the inflatable. It's really comfortable. Um, I do lose storage as far as on my body. Um, so that is kind of a downside where, you know, my phone, I keep my phone on a tether that's hooked to my belt loop and it's in my pocket. And well, not every pair of shorts that I wear have a belt loop. So I got to figure that out, um, which it's nice to have that stuff, you know, in a spot. And, you know, I think as kayakers, we've really got to be mindful of where we put our stuff on our kayak and how we fill that out. Um, just storage in general, you know, but that, that is nice. I, I don't know. It would be hard for me to go back to like a Chinook style because I think it's so bulky. Um, I, I already feel like I'm a bigger guy and, and, you know, moving around the kayak, I wonder if that would limit me. But I guess if you've started there, you, you probably wouldn't notice it. Um, but again, you lose, you know, storage, pliers, uh, cutters, uh, your, your, you know, your, your safety stuff, maybe your wallet, maybe just random little stuff that you may need that's really easy to get to with that Chinook. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's one of those things that you kind of, and we say essentials, but it's kind of tough because you, you find out that you buy 10 things and use five, sell the other five, and then buy three other things that you think would work better. Um, and it's, everyone's different, but I, I think those two, no matter what, you know, your paddle, your PFD, those are, are must haves. Um, you know, you can go along to an anchor, you know, some people want an anchor. Some people want the ability to anchor deep, you know, whether that's with an anchor wizard or maybe they fish a lot of shallow water and they'd rather have a micro power pool. Of course, those are two different price differences, but it's it's what fits your style of fishing better. Um, so it's, you know, and, and it, maybe you have spot lock and the anchors are not really necessary for you. And there's kind of stuff to think about it too as, as far as your boat and what what's essential for you. Um, and maybe you just use a trolley. Maybe you're not even using the anchor wizard. Maybe you're just a, a trolley guy or a, 
a rope and a da bomb anchor or a rope and a claw. You know, there's, um, you know, getting into the sport, there's just so many different things you can buy. Um, and I always, it, it, it's like camping, you know, you go camping and, you know, you end up getting into three of the five totes that you brought, you know, and you, you overpack. Um, I think that's one of the hardest things for new people to, to kind of get a grasp on is um, just managing what you're taking because inevitably you always take too much. Um, but that's something I really had to learn is how to pare down my tackle, um, how to pare down, um, just the stuff that you take, uh, you know, you take a cooler and, you know, you want some cool drinks in there, but originally you're talking about your Yeti or, or whatever. And then by the time you pack that and then your, your black pack and, or whatever tackle management you have, you know, it just ends up being so much mm -hmm. that, you know, you really got to just really kind of mold it to you, but, um, but really just, it's just test driving it, just getting out there and doing it. And then be mindful of what you're taking and what you used. Yeah. And that's, and I think that's a biggest, the biggest thing is just be mindful of that and go, okay, you know, I've got, you know, three internal rod holders and two, you know, external yak attacks or railways or whatever. And, I never use that one on the left side. Yeah. Well, let's get rid of that. Yeah. You know, and, and just minimalize your boat down to being the most efficient um, tool that you you can. And uh, I think that's a, a just a really big part of it. I think anchors is a huge deal um, because, like you said, I think the swing on dollars is so big on some things. You know, when you're talking about um, rod holders, you know, it's a twenty five dollar, thirty dollar decision so you're not hurt too bad on it but when you start talking about you know micro power poles versus anchor wizards versus just a trolley system and an anchor um you know really get out there and just figure out what you need before you just start buying uh, and that's something we really coach our customers on here and, and and not only our customers but just new anglers we get guys in here all the time that are okay like, hey, i think i'm gonna get into this what do i need i'm like i mean for the tournament you know you need your fishing gear you need your pfd you need your paddle I need a catch board. Yeah. Past that, it's all subjective. It's all you just figuring it out. Yeah, and it's really easy. It'd be super easy for, like, Kevin to come in on Saturday, and he he, he flat out asked, and he's like, well, what do I need? And, and it's easy for us to say, oh, you need this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and and then, you know, you've got a, you know, a bad situation because the guy only wanted half of that or used only half of it. Um, so it would be easy for us to say, hey, you know, this is what you need. But it's it's totally difficult to do that based on angler to angler, you know, if he was just doing rivers, um, he may not need, you know, half the stuff that I would want on, on a lake boat. Um, uh, so, um, you know, take the time. And I, I know most people don't just jump into a kayak. Um, they do a lot of research, whether it's YouTube or forums or different stuff like that. Uh, and I, I think that's why we try to bring, um, a lot of our pro staffers, um, to your attention as well, because they're a resource. Um, you know, I think we were talking about it yesterday. I think seven of our guys, um, on the pro staff, they, you know, either fish competitively out of an old town or o own an old town in some sort of fashion. Uh, so there's, you know, tons of knowledge there where, you know, Garrett, like we'll talk about, you know, he's on the river. He's a Jackson guy. It's, it's, it's tough to get him out of that boat. And, um, Robbie's van hunks, um, you know, Brandon, he's, he's a, he's a new canoe guy. And so, you know, I know we talk about our guys and what's going on here, but, uh, ultimately we want them to, to be accessible to you all. And that way you can get, you know, a, a conversation going with that individual and talk to them. Um, every single one of our guys are very approachable, whether it's on social media or personally. So reach out to these guys and, and, you know, I'll put Garrett stuff and, you know, we'll talk to him today and, and I'll put his information in there, but uh, below that I'll list all our pro staff's information and that way you can reach out to them. I'll, I'll even put a note in there, you know, what they're fishing out of, um, you know, competitively and then maybe their secondary boat. Um, and that way you've got a good idea to say, hey, well, I'd rather talk to Brandon because I'm more interested in the new canoe uh, than any other platform. And, and he may answer some questions that it may completely change your decision, too. Um, and that's possible. You know, we've had people come in here, set on a boat. And, and once we start looking at other stuff, it's like, oh, man, I don't know if I like that or not. And, and that's, you know, one of the things nice about having a shop and, and resources is you can really figure out what you want, figure out where it works for you and, and make a, a mindful decision. Yeah, and a demo program where, you know, we, we had it last week. We had a, uh, some folks come in uh, that were looking at tandems. Uh, I got a call from a guy uh, up in the Branson area, um, lived in the Lebanon area now, but uh, he uh, 
was looking for tandems. Wanted two tandems, had two young children, and him and his wife wanted to get a couple tandems, and they were looking at a bluefin. Uh, Van Hunk, nice kayak, um, pretty basic, not a lot to it. Um, but then he let me know he was six foot eight and about 260. <laughs> and I was like, buddy. Yeah. I said, I am not trying to upsell you, but you are not going to be comfortable in that kayak. Yep. And um, so I told him, I said, we're going to put you, we're going to take that one out. Um, Jonathan handles our demos. Uh, so uh, he went out in that boat with the, the blue fin, took the orca. And then I told him, I said, I'm not trying to, you know, a major upsell here, but I really think you should go out in the unlimited, um, the new, co- new canoe unlimited. You can add another seat to it. Um, and it just, for a guy that big, you know, it's just finding the right thing. And they went out and it was no surprise that the, the, the new canoe really stood out. Um, it's a lot different boat, but a guy that big, I mean, it was just good for his legs. So, um, I say all that to say, you know, come test drive some of these, uh, and, and like Jonathan was saying about our pro staffers, you can reach out to all of them. Mm-hmm. If you can say, hey, guys, I want pros and cons about the new canoe. I want pros and cons about the Jackson or the, the Van Hunt. You know, reach out to everybody. You know, find out what their thoughts are. Um, you know, as we were talking about management um, inside the kayak, you know, a lot of those guys going from river to lake got it figured out. Yeah. Because they're so – because in the river, you're a minimalist. Yeah. You know, the guys going from the lake jumping in the river, it's a whole different thing. They're yeah. like, you know. Yeah, it was really cool doing that demo, too, because, you know, they had two kids with them. And so it was, you know, the, the wife and her daughter were in one and, you know, him and his son were in the other. And, and it was tough to get them out of that new canoe. They were really impressed. It. They really loved those swivel seats. Um, you know, they were concerned about what, where the kids were going to sit and, and this, that, and the other. And, and I think by the end of the day, they were all up on the bow um just paddling with their hands it was fun it was cool it was really you know nice to see but it was one of those things that they had that moment where like you know maybe that's maybe my thought of online shopping in this boat is not you know the ticket i think it was in their price range i think it's what they were thinking or what they wanted to spend um but and that's the nice part maybe maybe you you know have the ability to go to that next next price point and get another features and and maybe you don't and and that's you know it, your deciding factor on that boat uh, and, and I think that's the the pleasure of us having so many lines is we can literally put you in three or four different boats. I mean, our trailer will hold six different kayaks. So if you're kind of not really sure, we'll let up six different ones and we'll rock and roll. Yeah. And then Jonathan will go out with you, you know, you know, just making sure, you know, if you're an avid um, kayaker, just looking for a new boat, then, you know, it's not as important. But when you're new like that, you know, it's good to have somebody next to you. Uh, we actually had Robbie out there filming, you know, doing a little footage. We may throw a little clip in here of it. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I think that the biggest thing is when you go to a kayak shop, and hopefully you have a good local kayak shop that you can, you can support, um, when they do that, you know, none of, no, no actual kayak shop really sells, um, I, I don't want to say a bad kayak, but, but more of a junk kayak. So, um, you know, we, we all have price points that are, that are just not going to be those three $400 $500 kayaks. Yeah. So we understand it's an investment. Um, and the worst thing we could do is get you into a bad investment. Yeah. Um, and so that's why, like I said, the blue fin, I just knew as soon as he told me kind of what he was doing, that that was not going to be great for him. And it wouldn't be something that long term that they would enjoy. Um, and even though that was more the entry level one, it's still an investment because it's a good quality kayak. And there's that kayak works for a lot of people. Just not that family. Yeah, it's definitely a tough decision too when they're going to two tandems as well. Um, you know, you're you're looking at twice the cost, but um, at that point, it's it's definitely an investment and definitely worth your time. I mean, just like buying a vehicle, you don't you don't just you know hey, I'll take that one unless it's you know just rolled off the assembly line and you've already ordered it. But you want to take it out, you want to kick the tires and do all that stuff and, and try it out and see if it actually fits you. You know, and the the beauty of that new canoe for them as well is having two kids. Um, any of you that have kids or are in the middle of raising kids or done raising kids or getting ready to raise kids, um, they go from three to five to 17 to 25 in a blink of an eye. Um, that new canoe is nice because you're just four screws away from that going back to a tan, uh, to a single kayak. Um, your resells better on that. Um, and 
so I think there's just a lot of options. I mean, they could come and get a couple more kayaks once their kids are old, old enough, and they could drop down and turn those back into, you know, just singles. And, you know, like I said, that's all stuff you can run through when you do a demo because it's not just the on-the-water stuff. Um, it's tied up to the dock, touching, feeling, figuring out what this looks like for you today, tomorrow, and beyond. Yeah, it's a good time. So anytime you get a demo kayak, definitely do it. Um, put your hands on it, get in it, get in the water, get it wet. You know, it, it's a huge advantage for you as far as, you know, investing into your, especially if it's your first kayak. You know, if you're, you're four or five kayaks, you may already know, but um, especially your first one, uh, definitely demo it, get into it. Um, we'd love to help you out. Local shops, I'm sure a lot of them do it if they have those kayaks available. Um, but reach out to them, reach out to us, and, and we'll help out as any way we can. Absolutely. Well, uh, I think we're going to move on to Garrett. We'll get him in here, kind of find out what he's got to say and then uh, kind of what he's up to. And uh, Before we get to Garrett, we'll, I'm going to drop in the Robbie's tackle tip. He's been working on a tackle okay, tip. We'll perfect. put that on there. Uh, we'll get Garrett on here. Uh, Garrett's super smart, super witty guy. Uh, can't wait to talk to him um, and uh, reach out to him. Uh, super, very knowledgeable guy. Um, he is uh, very smart, and sometimes it goes over my head. I will say that. But Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, he's a pretty good example that, you know, some of us, some guys kind of get locked into a brand, and they and that's and that's awesome. That's just what they love. Um, I know he is uh, in an old town, uh, 132 PDL, but um, – I think he's leaning towards maybe switching to a Kusa. Yeah. And uh, he's a Jackson guy and likes Jackson, and he's an Old Town guy too, um, much like myself. I, those two brands I really like. Um, but, you know, he's a good one to talk to about those things and, and figure out why he's making those moves. So let's go to Robbie's tackle tip, and then we'll go on to Garrett. Hey, everybody. I'm out here in the Van Hunks Elite Pro Angler, and today I'm going to show you my tackle tip of the week. Today we are talking topwater frogs. We're gonna be talking about specifically uh, skirt trimming. Uh, a lot of guys do it, a lot of guys don't. Um, but if you haven't heard of skirt trimming before, basically we're gonna take these, uh, these legs here, these frog legs, and we're gonna go, I'd say right about in half. Yeah, we're gonna trim these little legs right here and then just trim those right about in half both are even uh some guys do a little bit different on on the leg length on each strand but today we're just going to go straight in half so after doing that we're going to take this setup it's my only rod and reel for the day i'm going to throw the frog cut these skirts and we're going to get after him hopefully get on a big one but show you guys how you can hook up on a topwater frog better than ever i'm probably gonna head out here in a minute yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's big. Okay, it's not as big as I thought, but it's still pretty big. Oh yeah. Let's go. Woo! Pretty good. I thought the thing was like a 10 pounder. The way it hit. It's a solid 20 incher. All right, guys, we just got the kayak loaded back up. Amazing day today. Really, really good tackle tip. Thank you guys for letting me on here and uh, see you guys next time. Hey guys, we want to welcome Garrett Reed to the show. Garrett, welcome. Thanks for having me. Garrett, thanks for being here, man. Uh, I know you're part of our pro staff as well, and we've had uh, uh, Robbie and Mason on here as well. And uh, the cool thing I think that sets you kind of a different or apart from them is definitely your style of fishing and what you like. And so let's kind of jump into that. Uh, talk to us about how you got into kayak fishing and uh, what's that, you know, kind of that progression is. Yeah, so I'm from a uh, small town in Richland. So we're right by the river. So naturally, a lot of river fishing uh, throughout my days, uh, a lot of canoes and john boats. So it's fairly similar to, to uh, kayak fishing, kind of that. You could fit it in the truck bed, throw and go, dip it in, shallow fishing, floating, stuff like that. Um, got into tournament angling, uh, probably about 14. I did some local club bass boat tournaments and that competitive side, I kind of liked it. Um, 
throughout college obviously don't have money for bass boats, so <laughs> I got into the kayak side of things. Uh, you could certainly spend some coin on those too, but it's reasonable, you know, not $120,000 or a little bit less than that. Uh, yeah, so largely rivers, uh, a lot of lakes here as of late. I've kind of been getting into that Moyak, All-American Kayak Series, lake tournaments, traveling for those. Uh, but the river's definitely where my where my home is. What is uh what is your uh what would you call your home river? Is there a certain spot you really like to go to? Uh Cascanade River is, is my go to. Uh there's lots. In central Missouri it's, it's almost cheating for the rest of the state. You got the big piney, you've got the Merrimack kind on the eastern side and the Gasconade River. They're excellent rivers. And you've done quite a few of the uh Moyak t- uh river tournaments this year, right? Yeah. Yep. I've fished all but the uh, one in April. Mason had to have schedule his wedding on tournament day. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mason. <laughs> yeah, Mason. <laughs> well, uh, Garrett is from Joplin, Missouri, so he's kind of our only angler that's got a little bit of distance from us. Yeah. But any local stuff down there that you like hitting? Uh, Shoal Creek. Shoal Creek's actually really good. Uh, it's more like a river. It's like a people call it the Mini Gasconade. It's fairly murky. It's not like that crystal clear eastern river. Uh, it's real good. It's got some awesome smallmouth and largemouth and not a lot of pressure. A lot of folks bank fish. They don't get on it and in kayaks and it's very narrow in spots so that's where the kayak comes in handy you don't run into jet boat traffic like you do on the gasconade or merrimack what was your uh we always like to ask some of the guys what, what was your first kayak what, what first how, did, how did you just kind of start off in the game that was a lifetime i can't remember the name of it it was a lifetime i won from project grad in <laughs> high school i paddled it around and it was tippy not not for me i sold it and got a john boat and then let's see i transitioned to a wilderness Systems Radar, and traded it in the same day for a Jackson Bite. Nice, yeah. nice. We tell people a lot, a lot on here that we, when we talk about the river, because you're kind of our river stick, mm-hmm. um, you know, that you run the Jackson Bite. Yes. Um, I have a Jackson Bite as well. I tell everybody, Jonathan's probably tired of hearing it, I tell everybody <laughs> that that's the river kayak. Um, and it's, it, to me, it is. When we, we've talked on our past shows a little bit about, you know, finding that boat that's specific to you. So how did you make the decision on, you know, after your bite, kind of know why you made that decision because you're a river guy. Yeah, yeah. So how did you get into the, the, the lakes and how did you, what do you fish that with that? And then how did you choose that? Um, so the bite, it's an excellent moving water boat. Uh, it's whole shape, the storage, the paddle ability, the length, the weight, it's all perfect for that. It works in rivers or lakes rather. Um, it doesn't handle waves quite as well. It is a shorter boat and the hull is wider. Uh, so I decided to to get into the lake game. I got a Old Town Big Water PDL 132, and I've had it for, let's see, almost two and a half years now, and it's amazing. I can't, I've pondered trading it off, but I can't do it. I love that boat. Uh, the length, the weight, uh, the PDL is bulletproof. I've la- literally ran it over at Table Rock for the All-American. <laughs> literally ran over and all it did was break off the plastic prop. You just put another $10 prop on, you're good to go. Done deal. You know, we were talking about it before we got on here about, um, I took that boat out um, with Sarah and I and I was really impressed on the speed that you could get on that kayak. Um, it moved really well through the water. Um, it just overall seemed like a solid boat. Um, what are one or two things that makes that boat better than some of the other kayaks that you've been in? I'd, I'd say number one's got to be the PDL. That thing is bulletproof, lightning fast, and zero maintenance. You can, I mean, literally two and a half years I haven't touched it. I've, you know, kind of cleaned line off and, and just some CRP on the, on the shaft. But I'd say that bulletproof PDL's got to be number one and stability, number two. I've stood on main lake points with three foot rollers and I can stand up and throw a crankbait. So that's a big selling point for me. Stability. I'd say so. <laughs> yeah, not getting thrown out of your yaks. So no. That's a big plus. A lot of, uh, you know, people that come into the shop, they look at that boat and they they see the length on it. And, uh, you know, it's not super wide compared to some of the other ones. Um, but they would look at it and like, that's a, that's a bigger boat. Um, does it feel like that to you when you take it out? Does it feel like a super, like almost too much to handle boat? It does look, yeah, from the side, I'd say the profile, because it is a little taller. Um, it's fairly wide. It's not as wide as some of the boats we have here today. Um, I'd say once you get in it, it really seems to form to you, honestly. It doesn't seem too crazy long. The seat's not, you know, fore or aft too far. 
Uh, it's definitely manageable too, loading. You see some of those 14 foot plus boats or the 37, 38 inch wide boats, they're hard to load. So, Yeah, I think that's, it's a misconception when, or deceptive when you look at that boat and realize that it's a fast boat. Yeah. The thing's, it flies. Yeah, the, the guy I got it from, he said it was built for speed, and I was just thinking it can't be built for speed. Look at the size of this thing. Until I got it on the water, you could have it loaded down, and four and a half miles an hour is really not, not no thing. No, even Jonathan uh, told a story last week about him and, and Sarah going out, and they're 106, and then in that 132, and they were pedaling at the same speed, but the 132 was just taking over, yeah. you know, taking up ground quite a bit quicker than the 106, but... Like, I think it's just the way that keel is and the way the, the, the hull is built. That thing's just, it's just made to draft water like crazy. It does, yeah, it does have that nice V, but transitions into a flat, so you have stability in the mid of the boat, but the keel, they just slice through water. Yeah, that's a good boat. So, uh, what's next for you? Oh, in the kayak, as far as kayaks? Yeah. Um, I'm leaning towards another Jackson. I recently sold my bike, trying to save it up, save up a little coin. Uh, to get a Kusa HD. That's the next mission. Uh, fantastic riverboat. We know a place. <laughs> we know yeah, a place you can find do. one of those. <laughs> we got a plug for that. A stack at, of them, Might actually. be staring at one right now. <laughs> so uh, it seems like a lot of guys that get into a Jackson, whether it's a bite or a U-Pick or something else, um, it seems like a lot of guys are truly loyal. You know, you get those Old Town guys, those Hobie guys, and Jackson's one of those ones that, those guys really stick with those boats. Um, what has it been for you um, as far as, you know, going from the bite and makes you want to stay in that Jackson? Uh, their build quality is just bar none. It's, it's way up there. Uh, their seats are comfortable. Um, I have, mine has seen some days. The person that has it now, and it's still functional, great. Um, their whole strength and designs, their whole designs are probably the best, one of the best, if not the best in the game. Um, as far as shapes and, and stability in mind, but also tracking through the water. Especially on rivers. Especially on rivers. Uh, yeah. they're, they're the lead on river boats, in my opinion, for sure. Yeah, they almost worry me when they come out with their big boats. You <laughs> yeah. know, because, you know, the, you have the big rig and the, the yeah, big tuna the, and some different ones. And I always worry about that because, in my mind, the river is definitely their lane. They, and, yeah. and I don't think anybody else is has stepped up into that at quite as well. I mean, there's a lot of good boats by everyone. Of course. Um, but I'm like you. And, and like we talked about, guys, before, it's definitely personal preference stuff. Um, but I think that the, the Jackson is is just one of those brands that just kind of figured out one part of it. Yeah, and, and ran with it. And then and, and us guys that were on it early, it's just hard to think of anything else it's, once you've been in, like, the, that bite. I think once you, yeah, once you paddle one, you don't really see the need to get a different one. I mean, if I didn't get another Kusa, I'd probably get a bite again just to have a, a new, newer bite. One of my buddies that got me, kind of got me into kayaking, and I've talked about him before, but he is a Kilroy guy. That's all he's ever had is Kilroy's, and he absolutely loves the Kilroy. I don't understand or like the sit-ins, Yeah. but if I was ever going to do a sit-in, that's the yeah. only one I would ever do because it actually has like a sit-on-top seat inside of the the hull of the kayak which uh you know the other companies that have the sit-ins they have them but they still haven't quite figured out what that angler really is looking for and that's that seat yeah when you're spending 12 hours a day or more in so absolutely that's what it comes down to a lot of the time saves your back talk to us about your uh, season on the river so far um you've had some decent finishes um i know the one that we fished together you finished pretty well yeah um, talk about that and, and uh, you know, kind of what, you know, how, how you did. And then um, talk about it, kind of what your focus is when you enter a river tournament. It's, you know, a little bit different than a, um, you know, a, a lake tournament, a lot more prep on it. Um, but, you know, tell us about, you know, how your season went and then what you kind of plan for when you go into the river. So missed the first one. It was my month, too. April's my best river month, those smallmouth start to think about spawning and they're feeding. They got the feed bags on big time. Um, so missed that one. And then the next was the James tournament. Uh, that was a pretty good tournament. We had a pretty good field of anglers. Um, ended up with somewhere, I believe, high 70s in yep. the inches. Yep. Yep. Just missed a check. Uh, this last one was a bit of a dumpster fire, if I'm honest. We went to the Merrimack uh, in the lower Merrimack and the jet boat traffic was unlike anything I've ever seen. Uh, you can go to the lower Gasconade and you'll see a dozen or so boats, jet boats going up and down. Uh, but we saw 
if I had to guess, it was about 70 jet boats in wow. the course of 12 hours. So getting to the side and letting them go up the wake, and then the wake they push hits the mud walls and it stains the water. So you see got turbidity, uh, a new stain, and then Mason actually got flipped by one of them. He he was in his old town, like not flipped, but lifted up and thrown down. Yeah, broke one his of those prop. Jet boats. Yeah, snapped yeah. A, and the PDL still alive. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm yeah. telling you, man, it bulletproof. Is. It is. Um, so the next one is actually tomorrow. I'm going to be fishing the Gasconade River, so home waters. Uh, it's going to be 163,000 degrees. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, roughly, <laughs> give or take. Water's low, so the fish are going to be stacked up. Uh, you got to find those deep pools, rocks, uh, rock piles, and and stumps. Um, Usually how I go about entering a river tournament, typically a lot of map work. I look at my Onyx maps. You can use any map you want from satellite imagery. Um, first thing I do is look a hey, where the river tournament is. This one's central, so obviously I picked the Gasconades, my home waters. Um, but I'll kind of look for accesses first, and then they have a, an ability to map out lengths. So picking the correct length of a river is huge. If it's a fast-flowing river and you pick a four-mile float, but you have 12 hours to fish, it's kind of tough. You have to really slow down, and there might not be enough water to fish. Right. But if you pick a 20-mile stretch and the water is super low and it's not moving, you won't have enough time to get to your takeout. So that's a big thing, uh, getting into the riverside. It's picking correct length float, and then you can kind of zoom in and just look for structure, key structures, rocks, logs, stuff like that. That's usually where I start, and then... There's, in rivers, pretty much a couple ways of going about things. It's usually some form of crawdad bait and topwater swim baits. So they could be finicky. They pick what they want for that day. It might be purple, it might be brown, it might be green pumpkin. So I start with the basics, and I kind of shift as it goes on. Perfect. So what is, moving more into that, what is more of your setup when you go out on the river versus your setup as far as rod selection yeah. and accessories on your boat that are important to you? When you're on the river, what's the difference between that and your lake boat? Uh, my number one thing on the river is trying to cut as much weight as possible. Um, it really helps the paddleability of your boat. You can have the smallest boat, but if you have 110 pounds of gear on it, it just doesn't track or steer very well. It kind of gets tippy. Uh, number two, I have different rods. He saw my setup. I have a lump of rods for a lake and a lump of rods for a river. Um, usually a couple jig rods, some spinning uh, rods for Ned rigs and small, smaller baits, and then a topwater rod always. I carry those five. Um, river, river fishing, you can kind of simplify. They might not bite what you're wanting that day, and you have to dial it in. But as far as baits, it's going to be in this pile. Whereas in the lake, you can throw 56 different jigs, and they don't want any of them. They want this one. Right. So dialing it in is just a little bit different. They're a different kind of finicky than largemouth. Um, as light as possible, I use the same net and paddle. Um, no sense really shifting anything there. Any anchors or, or anything um, yeah. like that? Yeah, I do run the DeBomb anchor off of uh, my anchor wizard. I have it rear mounted um, on my big water. I have it front mounted. I'm taking the big water tomorrow. I also have a power pole. Um, I'm going to try that tomorrow as well. The float I pick doesn't have a lot of low hanging limbs, so I'm going to be able to just use that remote, double click, nice. carry it into yeah. the gravel, and be able to stop on, the, on spot. That'll be nice for it's sure. A big thing in the river. Yeah, what are your control. Uh, yeah, what are your expectations for that at 132 on the uh, on the river? I've had it in the river. Um, I've pedaled it up and around. It handles well. As far as my only concern with it is just being a longer boat is the maneuverability. Um, some some spots on that river get really jagged. You have you know 32 inch wide space to get up and over a log. So I'm not worried about it tipping or anything else. Um, and then the prop, the prop does stick down a little bit. So with the water being low. You just have to be mindful to lift up the prop and the rudder in the back to make sure you don't drag it to pieces. Um, I think it'll do great. It's a fairly it's fairly big in most parts, so I think it's going to be great to be able to to not have to paddle. That's the issue with river fishing is the currents constantly moving you back. Um, so having being able to be hands free, you know, paddle up. You're moving your kayak up. You can steer it in one spot and still use your hands to to make fan cast and fish. That's the difference between catching, you know. 30 fish and 15 fish. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited to see how tomorrow goes for you on that and here, you know, how that, that boat performs on the river. And uh, so let's talk about, uh, you know, we talked about tackle a little bit. But, you know, going river fishing, what's, uh, 
what's that one bait or uh, one accessory that that uh, you always have on the river? It's got to be a finesse jig. Yeah. I don't think I could go river fishing without a finesse jig. It could be winter, fall, spring, summer. They're gonna bite the jig. You might have to change the trailer colors, weights, or you might have to pitch it to wood or let it drift with current. There's a million different things you do with it, but hands down, by far the most versatile lure. Smallmouth can't say no to a jig. <laughs> they just can't do it. They're hardwired. They they could be plenty. They could be full and under a log. They see a jig, they're hammering it. Smallmouth's your favorite. Oh yeah, yeah. Smallmouth, they're just different. They're just pound for pound. They're nuts. They they fight like nothing else. I say the same thing. And if I ever do any ocean fishing of any kind, it's redfish, because I I feel like redfish is like the smallmouth small mouth of the, the ocean yeah. because it doesn't matter what you catch, they're gonna fight like mad, and it's just. It's fun. Yeah. ton of fun. You could hook into, uh, you know, you're lake fishing a big lake with largemouth. You'll hook into a fish, and you usually know after the initial hook set with the weight what it is. So this is a big one or this is a small one. With smallmouth, every single time you set the hook, mm -hmm. it feels like a giant one, and you get it in, and it's 13 and a half inches long. Yeah. They're nuts. They're nutty fish. Uh, what else you got scheduled for the year? Um, are you going out of state at all or doing any more of the All-American series? Yep. Yep, we're going out of state for a couple. Uh, let's see, we have um, the one in Oklahoma. Ten Killer. We have Ten Killer, Oklahoma. I believe that's in October. Um, Norfolk Lake in Arkansas. For Moyak. Yeah, for Moyak. Uh, Moyak, we still have... Drawing a blank here. Uh, we still have Palmy Palm. to go to. Do we have Palmy? We have Palmy after Norfolk. We and have Table uh, Rock again for the championship. championship. Um, yeah, we're going... What about Wilson uh, Lake? What about Kansas. Bull Shoals for uh, All American Shoals. as well? That's a good one. Yeah, definitely going to Bull Shoals. Bull what Shoals about, and Tankiller. What about the Big Bass 250? The Big Bass 250 <laughs> is on the list. You already know. That's no brainer. <laughs> Especially on the home pond. Oh, I mean, yeah. It's such a big fish lake, you have to. I, I'm excited for that one. So, it's what do you good. think about kind of the format that we're doing and just kind of your thought on, on, on that tournament in general? It's really cool. I like that you have the, the big fish and then the, the limit side the two different kind of aspects because you can kind of pick and choose how you want to go about the tournament. I think that's really cool. The payout, you know, as far as a kayak tournament is concerned, that's, that's neat. First yeah. of its kind that I'm aware of. I think the neat thing is, too, is it, it'll keep everybody fishing to the last minute. Yeah. I mean, if you're – you know how it is. If you're an hour from, from lines out and you don't have a fish, it's kind of hard to start – trying to catch your limit right, with yeah. that last hour. It's, the, the, the quit starts creeping up in yeah, you pretty quick. Time. But if you're one fish one away. Fish. You start kick, cutting off them little baits <laughs> yeah, and throwing them big old glide saying. baits. You said, I got nothing to lose. Let's throw that. Yeah, exactly 262, I right. slide. Might as well. <laughs> well, yeah. I think it's going to be fun. I'm glad you're going to be part of it. And uh, we really enjoy having Garrett on the team. Um, we've got a really solid team, a bunch of really good men. And, and uh, – we appreciate you being on the show, my friend. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. I'll talk fishing anytime. Guys, we'll put all of Garrett's stuff in the description so you can go down there and check out his Instagram or Facebook stuff. Um, like always, any of our guys, any of us, uh, feel free to reach out. Garrett. Um, I'm a tackle junkie and a gear <laughs> freak, dude. I love talking fishing. He's he's sneaky smart, too. Like, <laughs> like it, We traveled out to Kentucky Lake, and I had to be like, oh, I get it now. Like, yeah. like, like see, super funny guy. Uh, great guy to be around. So any anything you need, feel free to reach out. And, and like that, that's you know from from Travis and I to any of our team guys, uh, feel free to reach out and, and, and talk to these guys. Um, a lot of these guys, we 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 fish differently. We set up our kayaks differently. Yeah, um, everyone's different. And so that's that's the nice thing about this is is using us as a resource. Big time. And we're all nerds in different ways. Like I will geek out for hours on river stuff, while the other guys might not care as much. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely reach out if you have any questions. I love talking fishing. Excellent, guys. Anytime. We'll be back after this. Hey, guys. I want to thank Garrett and uh, Robbie for that. Both great segments. What do you think about that tackle tip there, buddy? It's good, man. Good. Robbie's been out there working. Uh, it's always fun to hear him come back about his and his fishing stories, but I, I, Robbie's getting on the water more. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, uh, Robbie had a little scare, uh, do a little cliff jumping, <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, that 18 year old body, you know, still still makes the same sound when it hits the bottom of the water. So, right, right. So, uh, but he's back. Good to have him. Appreciate everything. Hey guys, uh, check out the Big Bass 250 um, online. Jonathan's going to leave all the information on everything. We really appreciate you watching the show, Jonathan. Anything to end it with? Man, get on the water. Get that kayak wet. 
uh, you know, catch some fish or just, you know, enjoy it. Whatever you're doing on there, but just get out there. Enjoy it. Appreciate you guys watching. Hope you're hooked. Adios.